Having a hysterectomy can come with a lot of questions and concerns. Well, today I'm going to review one of the most common questions I get, and that's how much rest should you be getting after having this surgery? My name is Dr. Dawn Andalone. I'm a pelvic floor specialist, women's health physical therapist, and helping so many women pre-surgery and post-surgery and what to expect can come with a lot of frustration or fear and I want to try to dispel that today and I have some other videos on this channel that can be super helpful when you are preparing for a hysterectomy or you've had one and you want to know your best recovery strategies. Now there's different types of surgeries. I'm not going to get into all the details but whether you had a total hysterectomy, a partial hysterectomy or you have an abdominal incision or not, these things that I will talk about today can answer some of those questions and also help you decide how much you should be resting versus getting up and moving. One of the biggest things that I can't say enough, and I tell my clients this all the time, is really paying attention to your body and the signs and symptoms of feeling like you're pushing it too much. Well, what will that come with? Either it's pain that increases or having any extra bleeding or extra tension and, and discomfort around your incision site. You really need to listen to your body and paying attention to your body is going to tell you how much you should be resting. Now there's no golden rule to say absolutely you should be resting for this number of days or this number of hours, but I like to tell my clients that you have to understand that everyone is going to be different after this surgery. Now, if you actually had removal of your ovaries, your fallopian tubes, your uterus, your cervix, whatever type of hysterectomy surgery that you had, you have to understand your body has undergone a change and some trauma to the area, which means it requires the downtime, the rest time in order to bring in blood flow and circulation and move the lymphatic system in your body that helps heal and recover. So when you have inflammation in your body, that downtime and rest, it encourages the ability of your body to respond to healing and heal properly as well. Now, walking and moving is going to be start to be very important after the first couple days, but you want to balance that out with the right type of resting as well as a little bit of movement as well. You don't wanna just stay in bed for two weeks after a surgery. So depending if you stayed in the hospital, how your after surgery care is and what that entails, some doctors may tell you to completely rest, like stay in bed for the first 24 to 48 hours. Some may say it's okay to get up and down, obviously to go to the bathroom, but not to climb stairs or lift children or do anything that is strenuous, especially during that first 24 to 48 hours as your body needs to respond to the surgery and work on healing first. So once you're home, the first two weeks is about gradual movement and balancing that out with the rest and recovery. When you are resting, it's important to have some comfortable pillows to elevate your legs, to move your legs around, to help with that circulation and blood flow, and it also will enhance the healing. I also love to give women breathing exercises and paying attention to your breathing can really help the healing process and also pain relief as well. So you might wanna go back to one of my other hysterectomy videos about recovery where I talk about the importance of breathing exercises. Now, if you're balancing out walking and movement with the rest, just think of the general rule in that first week, the same amount of time that you're resting, balance that out with the same amount of movement. And if your body feels too exhausted or painful or you start bleeding or having any major red flags, once you start doing more of that movement, and I'm talking about walking on flat surfaces, wearing comfortable shoes, just taking your time and taking it slow. You're not doing anything strenuous and you're not lifting anything. So once you've gone for a five, 10 minute walk, maybe 15 minute walk and you notice how your body feels at the end of that day and even the next morning 
if you feel okay, well, it might be okay to go another few minutes and do something where you're tracking your steps and you might wanna go a little bit further every day. Now, if you feel completely exhausted, like your body's telling you, okay, that was a lot and I'm not quite feeling right, well, then you know the next day you may need to increase the rest time and still do the walking, but don't do, don't push yourself to go more and more. You really need to listen to your body. This comes into play in about the first two weeks are really going to be important for gradually increasing your movement, increase your walking, and not pushing yourself to do anything that's too strenuous. Now, housework. General rule with housework, no vacuuming, no doing laundry where you have to having to lift anything. You might just want to stand at the countertop, prepare a light meal, or stand and wash a couple dishes by hand. Nothing with a lot of squatting, bending, lifting, twisting. Just take your time, have someone help you, and hopefully you can get meals delivered or some other service if you are home alone and you're having this time to rest and recover by yourself. Now, during this first two weeks, it's also very important to pay attention to hydration and nutrition. So while you are in this more rest phase and just gradually working on increasing your movement and your walking, well, make sure that you are not drinking a lot of caffeine or sugary drinks or foods. You want to give your body that healing. So whether that's some warm soup, um, some high protein snacks, lean protein, some yogurt and probiotics, collagen powder mixed with a smoothie, anything that is going to enhance your recovery and heal your bodies with some healthy um, habits and nutrition along the way too with fruits and veggies. It is also a good time to pay attention to your fiber content because if you are taking any pain medication and constipation is an issue, well, you probably have guidance from your doctor on what to do on that, but what you're consuming and eating in your body has a lot to do with how your bowels will start to become more regular as well. And the gradual increase in movement will also help stimulate your digestive system back to that normal stage as well and create less pain and discomfort when you go to the bathroom. Okay, after about two to two weeks, we go between two and four weeks. Here is where a little more movement between two and six weeks, this can bear, very much fluctuate from person to person. Some people feel like they're ready to start a little more movement, a little more activity and are looking for stretches to do or some gentle core and pelvic floor strengthening exercises. I have a great program for that that can talk you through the basics and what to watch out for. And once you get cleared by your doctor at that post-op appointment for more movement, you still don't want to go heavy back at the gym or do anything where you're lifting more than 10 pounds. But if you had a movement sequence and something that's guiding you through some spinal stretches and hip stretches, and then also um, working on your core muscles and your pelvic floor and keeping your back and your pelvis and all of that supported with those muscles, that's the type of exercises that I guide you on through my online program, which I'll put a link in the de description below that can be very helpful. But if you already did start some walking, you can start increasing this a little more gradually. You may notice you'll have those days where you still have to rest more, and that is totally okay. If you're having still bleeding or any uncomfortable symptoms, best to make sure you check in with your doctor if you haven't already, and just make sure that they're keeping you in check on what's normal and what's not normal and what to watch out for. Now, as you gradually increase increase. Maybe you're doing some stretching and some core strengthening exercises, but you're not going back to a heavy fitness class or even a Pilates class or anything like that yet that's really in a group setting. You're going to want to work on individual type of therapeutic exercises and nothing strenuous as well at that point. Now, once you hit about six to eight weeks and you are feeling pretty good, your energy level is coming back and you've done really well with your hydration and nutrition, you may feel like now it's time to push yourself a little bit more. 
I, the purpose of this video was to talk about the rest. So I wanted to discuss that time from the surgery up until about six to eight weeks. And that's where there's a lot of misconceptions or a lot of questions from how much should you be resting versus getting up and moving. So I hope I was able to answer that a little bit better for you. And I would love for you to comment below what other questions can we answer on this channel for you. It's important to listen to your body and check in with your surgeon if you're noticing anything that seems abnormal to you. I get a lot of comments and a lot of questions under these videos and many times I comment back telling women to make sure that their surgeon is aware of these things. So I can't answer them over YouTube, I'm sorry. <laughs> But I am here to guide you and tell you what I have found with success with the clients that I have seen after a hysterectomy as a physical therapist. So thanks so much for watching this video. And if you found it helpful, hit subscribe. And I hope to see you again in another video soon.